and then the rest is yeah. Yeah. Basically, she was feeling me, right? <laughs> <laughs> shot my shot, heavy. Shot her, shot her. <laughs> shoot her, shoot, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> At church, and at this church, there was this uh, this this beautiful woman right here <laughs> next to me. Um, but I was serving in the church as a uh, youth teacher. Being able to see him like in worship and just his heart and his spirit was like extremely attractive, and then him was attractive. So I would just like avoid him at all cost, <laughs> um, except for like those moments I could kind of sneak in when he was in Lila's class to just be like, you know, how is she doing without it being anything outside of that? So 2016, we were um, paired together to serve. And that was the first time that we actually met. I reached out via LinkedIn. <laughs> so uh, he wasn't on, I couldn't find him on social media. Basically, I was being a stalker and basically reached out, told him that, you know, I was praying for him and blessing and Noah and that I hoped that they were doing well. Basically, she was feeling me, right? And, uh, <laughs> shot my shot, heavy. She shot her shot, <laughs> shoot her shoot, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> she shot, but it was funny because um, if I go back to my dream, the dream was about someone popped up that was not on my radar at all. And so when she reached out, it was like this person that I had no idea had reached out and said that she was praying for me and she was thinking about me. And so from that moment, we just started talking and mm -hmm. kind of grew from there. But again, she was not living here. She was living in uh, Colorado. Colorado when I was here. We were doing long distance, right? So she would come every, like once a month. She was getting to a place where, where she was living at no longer felt like home. And so she was coming back and forth and she would have to go back and it would just be like, almost what, like a, a weight or something like that, you know? It was just horrible, it was yeah. horrible. My mom started asking me like, hey, you guys are moving in March? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she said, well, that's what Lila said. She keeps telling everyone you're moving in March. The third week of February, I got a call from my boss now, basically with the job opportunity. It would be coming, moving back in March. I would have a free place to live. And so we were able to come back. Lila obviously spoke into existence like for March. It was right when everything shut down. So he came out to like move us back and obviously being able to like move into a place that he came and like prayed over with us. And it was like this full circle moment of like when we left a year and a half earlier, basically to like go to the mountains to heal, like God saying you're coming back like covered, you know? I would say the definition of love is sacrificial and giving, and then just to be like fully transparent, fully seen, fully known. There would be moments where I would try to like hide part of myself or like insecurity or self-worth or things like that. And like God would show him me. And I consistently like had to cover myself until this point. And so I felt like if God was like, allowing him to see me in a way that no one else previously could, that obviously like there was something in him that God trusted with all of me. We were going through some challenges, um, some things, and I was just like, okay, God, like, is this, is this where I'm supposed to leave? Like, am I supposed to get out at this point? He said one thing to me, my grace is sufficient. And so because of that, I knew at that point that she was it because he would have been like, nah, go. Like, <laughs> like, but he was like, no, I want you to stay in this. And so every time that there's been any opposition or anything like that between us, um, he has stepped in. August of 2020, I was planning on proposing to her. And so at that time, um, I had everything set up. It was a plan with her family coming into town. And as I started to do this, everything fell through. Uh, the ring wasn't gonna be ready in time. Uh, her family didn't even come in town. 
And so now at this point, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not about to just do it if I if it's not going to work. So I go into prayer. I'm asking God, like, you know, why is this happening? Why is it not working? And he told me, not yet. When I said it, it was more from a place of like, there's something in me that has to like, you know, needs to, to be worked on. Um, but what God revealed, it was something in both of us. In November, two checks showed up in the mail. That was everything that I needed plus more to buy her ring. It was literally God was saying like, because of your obedience, I am going to give you the yes that you've been, been wanting. Well, so our church was supposed to have a New Year's Eve service um, at Church for the Nations. And when they canceled it, he said he was still gonna plan whatever we were gonna do for New Year's Eve. He said that he needed to get this guitar for his son, which didn't make any sense to me because I was like, a guitar for what? But so we pull up, he says he's gonna run in real fast. And then he called me and was like, hey, can you come look at this? And then I was like, it's about to go down. <laughs> When I walked around the corner, I could see like all the candles and he's like standing in this heart and it said, marry me. And so, so I walked up into the heart or whatever and then he asked me to be his wife. And then it was funny because usually you ask someone, will you marry me? But I asked him <laughs> be my wife because I was just like, we jumping in that. <laughs> so. It's not settling down. It, it, it's, it's building up. And uh, being able to be under one roof to create legacy with her is something that I am extremely excited about. And to <laughs> have more kids hey. and, uh, and you know, just, just one flesh, you know, and all of that. So I'm, I'm excited to build.